This video is brought to you by Rhino Shield. Today, we're looking at the first 10 things that you should do if you've just got your brand new iPhone 15 or any other iPhone that runs the latest iOS 17. Now, these tips and tricks are gonna help you get the most out of your phone's battery life, performance, as well as features. Let's get started. But first, I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 15 Pro. And if you want a chance to win, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment your favorite feature of the iPhone 15, and then follow me on Instagram at the Hans Schuddeboom, where I will announce the winner on the 31st of October. All right, so the first thing we're going to be looking at is customizing the lock screen as in iOS 17. Uh, there's a few new features that I definitely want to show you. So to customize the lock screen, uh, you're going to unlock your phone, press and hold, and this will then open this secondary menu where you can scroll uh, to easily cycle between your different saved wallpapers. Now to add a new one, we're going to press on this little plus icon here in the bottom right, and this will then give us a bunch of options to choose from, including your own photos, uh, weather options, and if we scroll down, we have the iPhone 15 specific wallpaper papers which I actually think look pretty good this year uh, we can also swipe through to see different styles uh, let's go with this yellow goldish uh, champagne colored one I think it looks quite cool and kind of goes well with my backdrop so let's choose that uh, and then we can also tap on the clock now as previously you can then tap on the different fonts here and choose whichever font uh, you like however now you can also adjust the thickness of the font with this slider that we have underneath now I really like this classic looking font uh, and I like it a little bit more on the bolder side I think it has a nice uh, look to it and then we can go ahead and also adjust the color so I'm gonna make it white to stand out a little bit more from the lighter backdrop uh, and then we can go and tap away to save it above that we can also uh, choose what information is shown here so as standard this will be the day of the week and the date which is what I like to use but you can also have it show say your next appointment uh, any upcoming alarms that you may have set up uh, or even things like the weather now I do like to have the weather show on my lock screen but actually do this in a different way through widgets now if we look uh, beneath the clock you'll have this secondary box here it's kind of covered uh, covered by this bubble but it is there uh, we can go ahead and tap on it and this will then allow us to add a widget to the lock screen now this is really cool as this is a great way to get a bunch of information always visible right at a glance. So you have a bunch of different options to choose from. You can see I have the temperature, uh, my activity progress, uh, as well as the percentage chance for rain, which if you live in a city, uh, in the city like London, uh, this is definitely an essential feature to have and can be an absolute lifesaver. Uh, so I like to have these three set up and then we can tap away. And as you can see, these widgets will now always be up to date and show you this information anytime you check your phone, whether that be for the time or say your notifications. Now, my only suggestion though, when it comes to widgets on the lock screen, also on the home screen for that matter, uh, is, to, is to use less is more. These are widgets that will consistently run in the background and as a result, give you up-to-date information, which is great, but does also mean that they do consume battery over time. So only use widgets that you really find useful or that actually add value to using your phone. Otherwise, I would remove them and therefore less is more. So I like to have these three, uh, no more than that. And then once you're happy with your uh, wallpaper, we'll go ahead and tap on add. And then we can also choose to assign it either to just the lock screen or the home screen and the lock screen. In this case, I'm gonna assign it to both. Uh, click select uh, set as pair and then as you can see that's now been added to our list of wallpapers and we can tap into it to set it and then swipe to unlock and then here on the home screen, I want to pay particular attention to the widgets. As in iOS 17, uh, widgets are now much more useful as they are now interactive. So to give you an example, here on my second page, I have a reminders widget. And you can see I have a list of the reminders uh, in that particular uh, list here. And what I can do now is I can actually check a reminder off once I've completed it. Where previously tapping on the widget would just launch you into the app. You can now actually interact with them. And this makes them much more useful, uh, particularly here with reminders. I can show you another good example. Uh, and that is a music app so let's go and add a new widget I can press and hold on any app or widget for that matter and then in the secondary menu tap on edit home screen uh, then I'm gonna press the plus icon here in the top right and let's say we'll add the uh, music widget in go ahead and tap done and as you can see on the music uh, widget it will now show you your most recently played song and then from there we can simply press play and right from the widget uh, start the music and then we can also pause it uh, right on the home screen which I think is a really nice feature to have uh, and by the way this is a fantastic song so now that widgets uh, are more useful with iOS 17, I really encourage you to go through the different options and see which ones are useful to you. I like to have my calendar here, my clock, and then again, the music and reminders on my second page. Uh, but like on the lock screen, don't overdo it. Only use the ones that genuinely add value and that you think are useful during your day to day, uh, as of course they do take some battery.
Now let's jump into the Messages app, uh, probably one of, if not the most important app on your phone. Uh, and what you can do in Messages is you can actually edit and unsend a message in iMessage. And this is a super useful feature. So let me go ahead and type out a brief message here. So I've just sent this message. Uh, I will be there in five minutes, but let's say I'm still busy filming this video. So it may actually be closer to 10 minutes. Uh, what I can do is actually press and hold that message. And then the secondary menu comes up where we will have the option to edit the message. And you can see, we can then change what we've typed. So using the space bar, I can press and hold to easily move the cursor around the message here. So let's move it to five here uh, and adjust that to 10 minutes. And then we can go ahead and press uh, the tick mark to then update that message. Now, a couple important things uh, to note when it comes to editing messages uh, is first, the recipient or the person you're sending your message to will not be able to see the edit history. So they won't be able to see that this was previously five minutes. However, they will be able to see that the message was edited as they will see a little edited icon uh, beneath the message. And then finally, uh, third, you can do this for up to 50 15 minutes after sending your message. So if you do want to make an adjustment, uh, make sure you do it within that time frame. Now let's say this video is going to take a little bit longer than I anticipated and I'm not even going to make it in 10 minutes. I just want to undo that message entirely. What you can do uh, is press and hold that message and then we can also click undo send. And as you can see, the message will now disappear from the thread. Like with edited, the person will not be able to see the history or in this case, what that message previously said. However, they will be able to see that the message has been unsent. Now, next, I want to show you a pretty cool feature that was introduced with iOS 17, uh, and that is stickers. Now, let me show you what these are. So if you tap on the little plus icon and then tap on stickers, you'll see that here you have a range of all of your saved stickers. And these are like parts of an image or objects that you can then add to your message. So let's say I have this coffee cup here. I can then click and drag that and literally paste it over or next to my message. And then the recipient uh, is gonna see it in the exact same way. So here you go, you got that coffee cup uh, placed right by my message. They'll also be able to react to it. Uh, and this is a fun, unique way to uh, to share your, your photos or again, parts of a photo and add some more life to your messages, uh, help convey emotion. That's something that's sometimes tricky to do uh, in message and in writing uh, and having a more visual way to do that, I think uh, can be great and be a lot of fun, particularly in group chats. But let me show you how to create a new sticker. So to do this, we're gonna tap on the plus icon Icon, tap on stickers uh, and then we'll tap the plus again and let me see if I can find a photo here that I can turn into a sticker there we go. Uh, so as you can see, I've just tapped on a photo and it's automatically going to select what it thinks would be a good sticker. Uh, and then you can also tap around and adjust this yourself. So you can either say select just a phone or just a watch here in the middle, which I think works best. And then we'll go ahead and tap add sticker. And as you can see in the list of stickers now, we have the uh, this Apple watch. And just like before, I can go in and drag that and basically paste it over my or uh, my recipient's message. Stickers are fun to use, but of course the most efficient way to get a message across is to type it the old fashioned way. Uh, and what you can do to make it more easy, particularly on the 15 plus or 15 pro max model is to access the one handed keyboard. Now to do this, you wanna press and hold on the globe and then over here beneath the languages, you're gonna have uh, three different options. So on the left and right, you have the option to access the one handed keyboard. And this is essentially gonna scooch uh, the keys more close together, either to the left or right side, depending on which hand you use. I'm left handed, so I like to have it on the left and that'll make it easier to reach with your thumb over to the other side of the keyboard. If say you're carrying your coffee in one hand, you got your phone out in the other, walking down a busy street, uh, texting now becomes a little bit easier. And then you can press the arrow here on the right to once again, expand your keyboard. Now, one of the first things I recommend you do with any new phone is to get a good case. And Rhino Shield are known for creating cases that not just add high drop protection, but also do so in style with a wide range of customizable designs to choose from, including some new improvements specifically for the brand new iPhone 15s. So here I have the Solid Suit, Mod NX, and Clear Case. And thanks to proprietary shock spread technology, these cases offer up to 11 foot of drop protection. And then for complete 360 degree cover, you can also add the 3D impact screen protector. What I like most about Rhino Shield is the endless customization options. So the solid suit I have here uh, comes in nine new colors and like the iPhone 15 has slightly rounded edges. So it feels really comfortable and nice to use in the hand. Online, you can literally choose from thousands of designs, uh, including my favorite, which is this great wave artwork to really make your phone stand out. And then there's the Mod NX case, which you can use in two ways uh, with just the bumper like I have here, or you can also add the back plate. The clear case for a more low key look uh, is now 23% thinner while still offering the same legendary Rhino Shield impact protection. Plus you also get a lifetime warranty against yellowing. Rhino Shield also use stronger magnets to allow for up to two times the magnetic strength of Apple's official MagSafe products for that extra security. 
To add protection and style to your brand new iPhone 15 or get a new look for your current phone or say your AirPods or even Apple Watch, be sure to head to the links in the description and use code DEON10 for 10% off your order. Okay, so now we're gonna get to one of the most important parts of this video, and that is battery saving tips. Now, I think the iPhone 15's battery life is really quite good. It can last you all day, but that does depend on how you set it up. And there's two big things that I recommend anyone do with their new phone. And the first is to limit the number of notifications that you have coming in. So to do this, we're gonna go into the settings app, and then right here, we're gonna click on notifications, and then scroll through the list of your applications and turn off the ones that don't need to be sending you notifications. So for example, here uh, we'll go and tap in this app and I can actually turn off notifications entirely you'll see it now says off and you can see if I scroll through my apps many of them are actually off and that is because almost every application will want to send you notifications but the reality is most applications don't need to and what this ultimately results in is not only better battery life as your phone will be going off less you'll be checking your phone less and you'll also be spending less screen time because chances are if you're going to check a notification you're probably going to unlock your phone maybe browse some social media watch a youtube video or two uh, before you know it you've spent 15 minutes uh, wasted on your phone where really you've just been distracted from your main task so this way when my phone goes off i know it is something important whether that be certain social media apps, uh, messaging apps, or finance related apps, these I keep on, but shopping apps or utility apps, I turn off entirely. And I highly recommend you do the same. The second big battery saving tip uh, is to fine tune your background app refresh. So to do this in the settings set, uh, app here, click on general, and then we're gonna scroll to where we find background app refresh. And just like with notifications, uh, almost all applications are gonna to want to run in the background, but most really don't need to. Now you do have the option to turn it off for all applications. And this I don't recommend as there are certain apps, like I find for example, uh, maps applications or messaging apps that I do want to run in the background and to always be up to date. So don't turn it off for all of them, but turn it off for most. Again, keep it on for your maps apps, your uh, messaging apps, uh, even certain games I find can be useful, but for most of them, especially utility, shopping apps, uh, application downloading apps, all this photo editing apps, they don't need to be running in the background, uh, using up your battery and also your, uh, per your performance as well. Because if you have many apps running in the background, it will actually take up CPU power too. So having this way will make your phone run more efficiently. Uh, and again, definitely save you battery. So go through, I'd say around half of mine, uh, I turn off if not more. Now I wanna briefly talk about charging. So first uh, we're gonna go into settings and then tap on battery. And here, by the way, you can also make it so that you see the battery percentage in the top right corner of your screen. So if you want that on, uh, that's where you'll find it. Then if we tap into battery health and charging, you'll see that not only can we see the battery capacity, which is always a great way to see your battery health, you also have the option to turn on or off optimized charging. And here you have actually two options. So we're here we have optimized charging. And what this is going to do is say you charge your phone overnight. It's going to first charge from 0% or 10% up to 80% at one go, and then wait with the remaining 20% till closer when you wake up. So it kind of learns your charging habits uh, and charges your phone accordingly. And this will help limit the wear of your battery. So this is something I recommend everyone turn on. Now, if you are really keen on saving or preserving your battery health, you can also now implement an 80% charging limit, which means your phone will only charge it up to 80% and then stop. Now, of course, the pro to this is that it will limit the battery wear and again, help expand it, extend its life, but it will also limit the amount of battery you have. And for me, I find 80% is just not enough to get me through the day. So I don't use this and I instead keep it on optimized charging, which is sort of the happy medium between 80% and none. But if you do really want to go that extra mile, you do have the option for 80% as well. Briefly, while we're on the subject of charging, uh, let me talk about chargers, as I've had a lot of questions about this, uh, and the optimal setup to preserve your battery health is to use a slower or lower watt charger that is wired, as higher watt, faster chargers, and particularly wireless charging will generate more heat and therefore cause more wear on the battery. So the optimal setup would be, say, a five or 10 watt charger that is plugged in through the USB-C port and just leave it charging overnight. Now, I have done a whole video that talks a lot more about the science behind this and what the best uh, charging ways are the pros and cons of each wired wireless fast slow uh, which i'll be sure to leave linked in the description but there's just a quick summary one of my favorite features of the iphone 15 is that we now get the dynamic island that was previously only on the 14 pro and pro maxes let me give you some quick examples of how to use this to your advantage as it really can be quite useful uh, so for example here in the clock app let me go ahead and start a timer got a three minute timer running as you can see if i now swipe home you'll see the status of that timer right on your home screen no matter which app you're in you can see if i go into settings it will still show you this information making it super easy to view another cool thing is you can then tap on it to enter that application 
application. And what is even cooler is you can also press and hold on it, and then it kind of opens up a mini app or almost a widget of its own to then allow you to pause it uh, or say cancel it entirely. Now, another useful feature of the Dynamic Island here is let's say I have a timer running. Uh, let me go ahead and play a song. And as you can see, I now have two apps running that utilize the Dynamic Island, where if I press and hold on the timer, I see that timer shortcut, press and hold on the music, I get to then edit my music to say change where the play ahead is, uh, pause it as well. And it's also a great way to quickly switch between apps. I'm going from my timer to the music, back to the timer. Let's jump into the Photos app. There's a few neat features that I definitely want to show you. Uh, and the first is cropping photos has become much more seamless and easier in iOS 17. So let's say I have this photo here uh, and I can go ahead and zoom this into wherever I like. And previously you'd have to tap on it, tap on edit, then crop to kind of align it where you had it, which is always difficult to do. Uh, instead, what you can do now is just zoom it in however you like. And let's say this would be the perfect angle to prop it in, uh, crop it in. What you can do is actually here on the top right, we now have the crop button so as you can see that just appears there go and tap that and then it will instantly crop to measure exactly as it was shown on your screen this is super easy uh, and really nice to have this function just one tap away tap on done and as you can see this has now been cropped Another cool feature is live text, which will actually allow you to copy text straight from a photo. Now, if ever you have a photo and you see this little icon here in the bottom right, this means that iOS has detected that there is text to copy. So let's say I have a product here. I can go ahead and press and hold on that text. And as you can see, like any other text uh, bubble, it will highlight it and I can even drag around and then press copy, and I've just copied the text right from that photo to either search up a product name, or say take a picture of a slideshow or a presentation in a meeting. A uh, great way to just copy and paste right from an image. Now let's talk about Siri. Now while Siri may not be the best digital assistant in the world, sorry Siri, I didn't mean for you to hear that, uh, it can still be useful for certain functions. However, the way you access Siri does matter as some, ver uh, some ways are definitely better than others. So let me show you the best way to use Siri. Now to do this, we're gonna go into the settings app here and then we're gonna scroll down to where we find Siri. Siri and search. And then here we have the option to turn on or off listen for. And what this is basically going to mean is that your phone is going to be constantly listening in the background for either the trigger word, hey, or the trigger word, Siri. Now I'm not gonna say the full phrase to activate your phones, uh, but you can now adjust this between these two different functions. Again, it's nice to have a shorter option here now. However, still my advice is to keep this off. As mentioned, when you turn this on, your, phone, your phone's microphones will be constantly running in the background, listening for that activation phrase, which does take significant battery over time, especially if you measure this out throughout the entire day. So my advice is to definitely turn this off. Plus this also stops uh, active accidental triggers. I find that sometimes words like uh, seriously can even trigger it. So I like to have this off uh, entirely and instead use the side button to activate series. I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold the side button here uh, and ask what's the weather for today. A quick feature I want to show you that is specific to iOS 17 uh, is AirDrop is now made a lot more convenient to use. So to share a file, let's say, for example, I have this photo here that we looked at earlier, uh, and let's say I want to share it with another phone. Now, what I have to do is simply bring up, uh, bring up another phone, tap the two together, and as you can see, we get this really cool on-screen animation, and you can see that they are now connected, and I can go ahead and tap on share on this photo, and wait for it instantly, it's going to then copy and then carry over to my other phone. And as you can see, just like that, I've now shared this photo uh, with both phones. It's a really nice visual uh, effect and also super functional. All you have to do is hold the two phones together, uh, they will connect and that will allow you to very quickly share files. And this doesn't just work with photos, it also works with videos. Uh, and you can also uh, share play things. So let's say I have a song playing on this phone, I can then share it over to the other. And uh, the same goes with videos, super useful. Next, I wanna show you one of the coolest features with iOS 17, and that is called standby mode. Now to activate this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your phone is charging uh, either through MagSafe, as mine is now, or via a wired connection, and then rotate it to landscape mode. And as you can see, once this is the case, uh, your phone is automatically gonna enter what is called standby mode. And here you can cycle through a bunch of different options. You have your clock here, your calendar, uh, we, can, we can even have your photo set up, you have like a photo frame, or even just different menus to choose from. Uh, and this is a great way to show information on your phone, say while it is on your desk, while you're working, uh, and more in a less distracting way, or say to function as a night clock uh, on your nightstand. It's really useful to have. You can even customize this. So if I go ahead and press here on this first menu, uh, press and hold on the calendar, you can see that we even have different widgets to choose from. So I also have the weather, uh, I have my calendar. I can then also automatically have these smart rotate, so automatically switch. Uh, and then I can even add more widgets if I like as well. I personally like to have the clock here. Uh, let's say maybe the weather, I think that looks 
really nice on a desk. Uh, and it's also purposeful or functional rather because it's a less distracting way to have your phone in front of you, uh, only showing that essential information. So again, to activate this, all you need to do is make sure your phone is charging, whether that be with uh, MagSafe or wired and in the landscape mode. So as you can see, if I rotate it back to portrait, it will automatically go back to your lock screen, rotate it to landscape, give it a second or two, and then voila, it will automatically go back to standby mode. The iPhone 15 has a truly excellent display, uh, but there are some ways to make it even better and to really optimize and get the most out of it. So let's go through some of my uh, top display settings here. So we're gonna go into the settings app and then scroll to where we find display and brightness. And first here, uh, you can change between your light and dark mode. Now, personally, I like to use both. So I have my automatic uh, turned on and it will automatically go between light and dark mode based on the time of day. So I have a custom schedule here from seven to 10, uh, it will be in light mode and then overnight it is in dark mode as I find at night Night, the dark mode to be a little bit less straining on the eyes, but during the day, light mode, uh, I find ultimately to be most legible. So this gives you the best of both. Uh, then if we scroll down, we can also adjust the brightness and we also have the option to turn on or off true tone. Now, what this basically does is it will adjust the temperature of your iPhone's display to the lights around you in your room. So as you can see, if I turn it off, it gets a little bit colder, a little bit more bluish, uh, where if I turn it off, uh, on, I mean, it gets a little bit warmer, kind of a warmer hue to it, which just makes it a little bit more pleasing to look at. Again, less strain on the eyes. Um, I definitely suggest you use this feature. My only suggestion uh, or only opportunity really or moment to turn this off is when you're editing a photo or video, as of course, in that instance, you want the colors to be as accurate as possible. So then you want this to be off. But otherwise, I definitely recommend you keep this on. Next, we have the auto lock function. Now, there's really one option here that I highly recommend anyone to avoid, and that is the never option, as iPhones now have OLED displays, which are great. However, they are susceptible to what is called burn-in, and that is if you leave your uh, phone screen on, on the same like a static image for a prolonged period of time, say for many hours, you can get what is called uh, can get what is called burn-in, in which you actually get parts of that image permanently burnt into the display. And essentially, this will damage your screen over time. And if it gets bad enough, actually require an entire replacement. So my suggestion is to really, uh, you want the sweet spot to be around three, two or three minutes uh, to make sure your phone does sleep. If say you accidentally forget to lock your phone when you put it away in your bag or leave it on a table overnight or something, uh, this means that your display will eventually go to sleep to preserve itself uh, over time. Now, if you wanna go be the most secure possible, uh, you can of course, set this to 30 seconds. This will mean your uh, display will go to sleep quickly, but also means that if ever uh, you leave your phone unlocked, it won't be unlocked for long. And then the last uh, display tip is more a hardware tip than a software tip. Uh, I'm going to do my best to pick this up in the lighting here, but the iPhone 15's display is quite crack resistant. And this is great as this means in a drop, your screen is less likely to crack. However, as a result, it is also softer. And this does mean it is more prone to scratching. And as you can see, I've only had my iPhone 15 for like two weeks uh, and testing it for my review. And already I have significant scratching here on the top that really I think is not acceptable after just a couple of weeks of use. So there's a very easy way to prevent this and that is to use a good screen protector and I'll definitely recommend you do so uh, and I'll leave my recommended screen protector down in the description. Now let's take a look at some essential security settings for your iPhone and the first here we're going to go into the face ID settings we're going to tap on that we're going to have to then type in the password and then in this menu, if we scroll down to where we find require attention for face ID, you're going to want to make sure that this option is on. Now, what this means is when face ID scans for your face, not only is it going to need to recognize your face to unlock your phone or authenticate a payment uh, or say view a password, it's also going to require you to look or to make eye contact with that face ID sensor in order for it to function. And this is just that added layer of protection. So definitely recommend uh, you turn this on. And then beneath that, we have probably one of the most important, but also commonly overlooked looked uh, security features of the iPhone. And that is the allow access when locked panel. And here you're going to really want to fine tune. In other words, turn most of these things off. As I see so many people who may have a password on their phone, but then still allow uh, for messages to be responded to or for Siri to be used, the wallet even to be accessed without unlocking your phone. And this I think is a big security risk as if ever you're say, uh, say your phone is lost or stolen. First thing that person is going to try to do is either guess your password to unlock it or to use any functions possible. And this turning off most of these will basically mean that your phone is useless uh, so long as your password is not correctly entered or say your face is scanned. Now there's a couple I do have on and that here is the lock screen widgets. Again, that's for the temperature uh, and the activity ring and the same thing there for the activities. Those are really the only two things I keep on 
everything else I strongly, strongly recommend you turn off. Now, one feature I recommend you turn on is if we scroll all the way to the bottom here is the erase data. Now, earlier when I mentioned when your phone is lost, people are, or someone's probably gonna try, uh, or say stolen, someone's probably gonna try and guess your password. This means that after 10 failed attempts, your phone will automatically erase itself. And this means that even when your phone is lost and no longer safe, your data still will be. So that is all, congratulations for making it to the end of this video. Uh, what can I say, you are now a true iPhone Pro. If this video was helpful to you, be sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss more content like this. And also don't forget to use code DEON10 for 10% off your order from Rhino Shield. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.